Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's NBA slate. And I'm doing this solo, so what I'm going to do is, again, I'm working on the best ways to deliver kind of content for the the NBA slates when it doesn't start too much later, where news is going to be much harder to come by um, early. Um, but what, what I am going to do is, again, when I do these slate previews on my own, I'm not going to go game by game by game by game by game, pick by pick by pick by pick. I'm going to look at the slate kind of as a whole from a top-down perspective. And then what I'm going to do is, similar to the way I do the NHL breakdown, I'm going to build kind of a, a single entry lineup uh, using my sheets. Um, and then we're going to have SaberSim help us build some NME lineups and see um, see what the differences could be. Now, in addition to that, with the NBA, I'm going to build two different single entry lineups, um, not knowing which is the best one. But I'm going to try to just give you guys an idea of what stars and scrubs type builds would look like and a or a stars and scrub lineup might look like and whether a middling build, what that would look like. And then maybe we'll also try to build a stacking type lineup and we'll see we'll see how this type of content goes. I appreciate all of your input. Um, and again, when Bobby and I do it together, we'll probably do the normal game by game stuff. But when I do it, I want to kind of you know mess around a little bit. So I want to do uh, do, the, do do it in a way that I think I would I would better learn from it. So let's uh, let's take a look. So it is the day of the 2,500. I'm probably going to play that. It's a pretty big slate, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, 10 games. Um, and what I'm going to be showing you now is the uh, are my sheets for today. And again, for those that are just watching this for the first time, these are the sheets that are usually available only for premium subscribers um, for 2DFS because I'm doing this all alone. I will uh, throw this up there uh, for you guys. And we're going to look at it two different ways. We're going to look at the sheet rated by sheets value score. And we're also going to look at it based on points per dollar. But just as kind of a summary, again, this is a kind of a not aggregation. I guess that is the best way to describe it. An aggregation of the various projections throughout the industry, which have been kind of adjusted by me um, based on my thoughts and my tweaks and this, that, and the other thing. Um, and my assessment of which models are doing well and which aren't and things like that. Um, and that's where these fantasy points are kind of coming from. And also that's where the ownership projections are coming from. And this is obviously very volatile, the uh, ownership projections. Um, and then uh, points per dollar is basically fantasy points into salary. And Sheets value score is again, my kind of uh, formula-based assessment of, of the combination of, of, of overall fantasy points and the value generated from points per dollar. So um, so what I've done on this slate is I first rated these by sheets value score. And the first thing you'll notice is as usual, I wouldn't say usual, but a decent amount of the time, the top projected guys, like the highest salary guys are going to be the have the highest sheets value score. And that certainly makes sense. But the other thing that you want to do when you are, um, what you call it? When when you're looking at my sheets for the purpose of building lineups, what you're trying to find are guys with a low salary or lower salary that rate really high in the sheets value score um, uh, metric. Um, so you will see that Rudy Gobert kind of stands out. You'll see that Jalen Br Jalen Brunson really stands out. You'll see that Drew Holiday stands out and and Sangoon stands out. So. If I were going to do a middling type of build, these are the types of plays based on my sheets that I would look for. You know, again, this is not using Saber Sim to optimize, you know, your build for upside and for correlation and all that stuff. This is just if you want to use my sheets just to build lineups. That's the first thing you do is I would look for high sheets value score guys that are lower priced. Okay, so again, we're looking at Rudy Gobert. Jalen Brunson, uh, Drew Holiday, and Sengu. Those would be the kind of the top plays in that regard. And then again, the other thing you look at is which of these, you know, top salary guys like rates the best. And 
you do see a pretty decent gap between Giannis and, and, and Jokic and all the other guys. And the other thing you'll notice is that the ownership discount doesn't really exist. Um, when you drop from Giannis and Jokic down to Sabonis, uh, Morant and Randall, you know, you, you save maybe a thousand dollars, but um, you know, the sheets value score here of these two is certainly not being ignored. So depending on what type of build you want to make, um, you're going to look to either play Giannis and or Jokic or some combination of these mid-range guys that we talked about or some combination of the two. Okay. Um, now, when we rate the slate by point per dollar, this gives you an idea of what type of slate it is. It is, In other words, what level of value exists as of, listen, remember, we're talking about as of the observation of these sheets, right? Right now it's you know, 100 hours before post time. But if this were you know 20 minutes before slate locks, it would be much more relevant. And that's what I would imagine most people build their lineup. So we're pretending that it's you know half hour before post time. And you're looking at this and you see, okay, it's a slate where you only have one guy that's rated a point per dollar play of over six X. And what that means is that it's not your typical, well, not typical, it's not a high value slate you know it's it's not a slate where you can basically play a bunch of studs at uh, you know with impunity um you'll usually get on a slate like this at least one you know 6x guy or higher but usually you'll get more so when you have a slate like this where you don't have that many 6x or higher players my experience is it's more of a slate that's number one going to be low scoring and number two it, it puts that decision to you of of would you rather play something like not that this is the only example not the only combination but would you rather play a yoke slash Giannis with one of these 3500 hour guys that are around 6x or would you rather spend the same 15,000 for example with two of the 7,500 guys that I kind of mentioned earlier. And it's not always that simple, you know, and that's, that's a very, you know, that, that, but that is really the decision that comes into play, you know, when you're, when you're trying to decide whether to put your stars and scrubs or middling builds is, is what, you know, which, which, which way to go. And normally, again, when you have a slate with only one guy above six X, it makes the stars and scrubs build a little more difficult. Okay. Cause you only really have one, major value piece uh to, to play with um so let's uh then do this let's go ahead and build a a lineup we'll build well we'll be build three different lineups we'll build a um a stars and scrub lineup and we will build a, a middling lineup and then we'll also try to build a stack lineup so the first thing I want to do for a the stars and scrub lineup is once again, I want to choose between um, one of these two guys. Now it really doesn't matter too much, but just for the hell of it, because Giannis is more, um, has more uh, positions you can use him with. Um, let's use him for now. So let's put him in at power forward. And then, like we said, you know, Let's uh, let's start with the with the best point per dollar play, which was going to be Dyson Daniels, um, and he's everywhere, which is good. So let's put him let's put him in small forward, just to see. Um, well, hold on, let's put him in in small forward just to see what um, what he's going to what everything's going to look like. So when we do this, we have 58.50 left, okay? Now, what you could do when you start this way is then go back to those kind of cool middling builds um, that we talked about, um, those good middling plays. And those were, as we will recall, let's re resort by sheets value score, and we will go, uh, go bear, and then holiday, and then Sangoon. So let's go, go Bear, Holiday, 
Blue Holiday. And then let's see if we could put Sangoon in somewhere. Let's put Sangoon. So now you, you'll notice that, that we do have, I don't want to say an issue, but we do have Giannis and Drew Holiday in the same lineup, which is something to something to note. Um, but if we're just making plays for now, again, so let's take stock of what we've done. We played Giannis with the top value, and we put in the top rated by sheets value score middling builds here. Okay. And then what are we left with? Now, now we're left with 48.33 per player. So now if we were going to fill this in, we'd have to go back to the, you know, to the probably the point per dollar metric and see what we like here. So Isaiah Stewart was interesting. He was ruled out of last night's game. So let's just see what that was all about before we go ahead and play him. Um, left shoulder soreness. Um, again, that's interesting. Um, but, but because we already have Gobert on the other side. Let's see if we can't put him in. Because it's kind of a good combination of it being, um, you know, a good point per dollar play. And he's got a little bit of raw points, you know, because he's not like a real, real super cheapo. So if we do this, now we're left with 4,600. And then we could play a lot of stuff like, like Malik Monk. He fits, you know, for example. So if we did that, we could put Malik Monk in. And then what other guards do we have? I mean, 4,800, I'm sure there's somebody out there, like like Monty Morris. Again, we're not going to play this, so I have no problem just kind of putting this in here for now. Um, so this is what a, a Stars and Scrubs type build would look like. In other words, we've used one of the 11-8 guys to get to this. Now, what, what you've, you'll notice is that it might make you a little bit uncomfortable because, yes, you do have the Drew Holiday and Gobert and, and Sangoon play in there. These other guys look a little fish, not fishy, but, you know, you're not too confident with all these. And that's what you get when you play these Stars and Scrubs builds. You know, you for example, if you didn't like that, why, what if we tried to play another, another star? Let's... What if we played Jokic, for example, real stars and scrubs? And then what we'll do is we will go and go back to point per dollar and just play the top, you know, uh, uh, point per dollar play. So we're talking about Terrain and Prince. Uh, that's, is he shooting guard? We can't even put him in there. But what we could do is we could put in Daniels at shooting guard. We could put in Terrain Prince over here. Terrain Prince, it's power forward. And you can actually do it, you know, because you're in the same spot and you still have that same 5,000 per man. Now, what you don't get are those, seven, you know, those really good 7,200s, but you could probably get one of them. I mean, you could still get Gobert if you want to do this. So let's just say you played Gobert over here. I mean, you could still do this. And now you're going to get three other guys that are 4,400. So you're back to the, you know, Malik Monk, the, uh, you have to go probably down to Pat Connaughton and things like that, but you can do this, but it's just, these are just like different types of builds, right? So, so this one is really stars and scrubs because you played two, you're the two top studs on the slate and you still can get this. You still make this work. Remember, we're talking about now point per dollar plays. They're not even six X, you know? Um, so it's just a question of, 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 of which way you want to build And I think both of them are kind of, we have the stars and scrubs and the Uber stars and scrubs that both seem to make, a, you know, some sense, but listen, you're gambling on these point per dollar plays underneath. Let's see. On the other hand, if we don't want to play any stars, let's say we don't want to play any, either Giannis or Jokic, what that would look like. Now, as you might imagine, now you could really start hammering some of these, uh, some of these, uh, uh, those sheets value score mid-range type plays. So let's just remind us again, 
of who they are. So you have Gobert, okay, let's go Gobert, Drew, Sengun. We'll start with those. Gobert. And then Sengun. Now it's annoying because you have um you have uh you know two centers that you now you're now you're kind of stuck here in utility, but whatever. And at 5880 per man, you can play like all kinds of these mid rangey type stuff. Like now, like you could play, say, Isaiah Stewart if he still becomes, you know, obviously, if he plays. You play Stewart over here. And then you could come back and you could even maybe even play De'Aaron Fox if you wanted to do that, you know. Valanciunas, you can't play because he's, you know, uh, he's a center, he's center eligible, polo center eligible. Um, Killian Hayes might come into a play in a mid-range build like this. But let's use um, let's get greedy. Let's, let's, let's play um, let's play Fox. I wonder what 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 happens here if we play Fox and pay the 8,900. So we're still don't even have to dip into any of these dice and Daniels left if we want, you know, and and you'll see this kind of this kind of playing out nicely. You know, you have Gobert and Stewart, you know, in, in the same game. You have Fox and Sangoon in the same game. You know, um, what other five K guys without even having to play someone like Dyson Daniels can you do? Killian Hayes. I just talked about that pretty you know quickly, but but he makes sense. Um, Kyle Anderson. Uh, he makes sense. And again, that's another player from that Minnesota game. Okay. Um, so just to kind of fit, you know, finish that out. Um, let's do this. Who is a shooting guard that we just kind of talked about? Uh, can't really get to Jalen Brown without going down to Daniels, but what about DeJounte Murray at 82? Can you get away with that? It would be nice if you could, because, now you can't quite do it. I mean, you can do it, but now you're playing, you know, uh, Terrain Prince and another guy. But what would be nice if we can get who was the sh other shooting guard? Was it Killian Hayes? Was he shooting guard eligible? No, he's point guard eligible. Um, what else? What other shooting guard can we get kind of mid range? It's not as easy as I thought. Um, Desmond Bain at 7K, he's a little cheaper than, so you'd almost do this, you know, you're probably gonna have to play one bit of kind of funny value, but maybe not two if you play this way. Um, so what did we do? We did kind of a, a, a stars and scrub bill. We did a double stars and scrub build, and now we did a no star, a no stars build, and no scrubs build. Let's do kind of a stack build, and, and, and you already see, you know, two of the games that we can deal with here. You know, you, you have Stewart and Gobert both in that Detroit Minnesota game. You have Fox and Sangoon both in that Sacramento game. So what I like to do before I check my phone um, uh, is see if I can't find anybody decent from the Sacramento and Houston game that kind of rate okay. So let's go back to rating these guys kind of by point per dollar and see what kind of shows up here. Point per dollar. Let's see. So we're looking for either Houston or Minnesota. So Deshaun Tate, 3,600. That's not bad. But what I really like to do is find someone who I know is going to be in there. Um, so even if it's not quite as good, like, so like a Jalen Green uh, would go with Sengu. Where is Por a Porter? He looks nice. So, so what I like, what I'm telling you, I like to do this probably more often than I should. But I will just make a full kind of, you know, late game stack out of this. We'll go Jalen Green. We'll go Kevin Porter Jr. We'll go Sangoon. 
will go Fox. Okay. And I think this, if you recall, we had Malik Monk as someone was rated as a decent play from that game. So Malik Monk is only shooting guard eligible. So we'd have to kind of make this work a little bit. Um, well, we don't have to play Gobert if we don't want to. So we play Sangoon in the center spot over there. And then we'll play Monk over here. And now we get a full-on game stack of Fox, Monk, and then we have Porter, Jalen Green, and Sangoon. Okay, and this is this is definitely a way to play, you know. And then you just fill in the rest with kind of good point per dollar plays, um, uh, or good mid-range plays. So that's one thing you could do is stack the Houston Sacramento game, which is pretty it's a pretty reasonable. Another thing you could do is go back to this Minnesota game. And let's start with that. So we'll start again. We already saw that we had a couple of good plays on Minnesota. Well, we had one good play on Minnesota for now. That was Gobert. Saw Terrain Prince, but I don't know if he's the same type of, you know, type of play. But we'll start with Gobert. And then we also looked at Isaiah Stewart on the other side. And the other guy that kind of showed up, when we were thinking about it, is Killian Hayes, right? Kind of a decent mid-range play. Mid-range play. So you could start with this, and then what I'd like to do is put another guy in. So what I would do is go back to Minnesota and see if there's anybody else that's rating okay here for Minnesota. Let's go bear. There's Anthony Edwards at 9,100, you know, and or D'Angelo Russell. So you could, like, if you wanted to, you could put in uh, Anthony Edwards. Now, he, we have him, he's questionable, um, left hip soreness. I'm not too worried about that. So we'll put him in over here. So now we have Killeen Hayes, Gobert, Edwards, and Stewart. And two versus two is probably enough. But if you wanted to, you know, if you really wanted to play for this game, like totally blowing up, you could go ahead and play, um, what's his name, D'Angelo Russell. And again, we're feeding off of how good this 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 Gobert play is, and we'll play Hayes and and Stewart, and we have a pretty full on good old game stack here going. And then fill in the rest with you know the same point per dollar plays we talked about earlier. So, um, I think either of those works. The one other I want to kind of just play around with is this Milwaukee one. So we had Giannis over here and we had Drew Holiday who rated as a strong play. Now, again, for these guys to, you know, have a good game, Atlanta's got to keep it close. So you probably want to play some guys from Atlanta. Um, the, 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 the DeJounte Murray played 8,200 is, is probably pretty interesting. But let's take a look and see if there's anybody else in Atlanta kind of stands out. There is Trey, who looks pretty good. I mean, I guess you could play them both together. It's not usually the way things work with this team. And you could play Okongwu to fill out that stack a little bit. So, again, you know, you play I – mean, this is this is this is this is not – probably not optimal, but you play a Kongu here and you play both Trey and um, uh, together. Problem is you just kind of run a salary in this belt. So I guess you can't do that. Um, I, I figured I would just check it out. So I feel as though that, the, okay, two ways you could play as far as stacks are the Minnesota Detroit game and the Sacramento uh, Houston game using those key uh, those key good plays that we kind of alluded to. Now again, slight uh, slate does not lock in a half an hour. It locks much later on the day. So you're going to have to make the same assessment based on the information you have with 30 minutes of post time. Um, so again, just to renew, just to just to re, uh, recap, 
two different stars and scrubs builds you can make both with, uh, you know, you can either play Giannis and Daniels or um, Jokic and Daniels or Giannis and Jokic and Daniels and Prince, something like that. Or you could play one stud with a couple of those mid range guys we talked about, or we could just play all these mid range guys we talked about, or two different stacks again, Minnesota, Detroit, or the Sacramento game. But let's now go into Sabersim and upload our projections into there and see what type of lineups we get when we do it that way. So we're going to build 150 lineups. We'll use 20 max settings. Why not? And we'll see based on our, you know, these are our projections that we put in, the true DFS projections, what type of lineup Sabersim would create for us. Now remember, Sabersim is, is calculating upside, correlation, all that stuff. And it's actually doing a decent amount of that um, stars and scrubs type stuff. Like you're getting 65% Dyson Daniels, 40% Connaughton, 35% Prince, and getting even some knee part because it really wants to play, well, I shouldn't say that because it's playing only 35% Giannis, 35% Jokic. I'm curious to see if out of 150 lineups, if they're getting any with both Giannis and um, Jokic. And you can do that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, we're getting five lineups with both Jokic and Giannis. Now, again, Five lineups on 150 isn't a lot, but it just goes to show that you can build with 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 both of them. The other thing you I can I can test here is how many with neither of them, and I'm getting wow 50 lineups with neither Giannis nor Jokic. So one third of the builds are pure mid range, right? Well. I should say that, but then you see these other kind of like a little bit lower spends um, taking their place. So it's not getting actually mid range. It's all, most all of them have over 10 K somebody, which is definitely not what I was thinking. I mean, I was kind of thinking more of playing some nobody with 10 Ks, but what's, what's cool is that, you know, if, if Sabres have been building it this way, they're probably a lot of people building it this way. So the pure mid range builds are going to be probably extremely unpopular. Um, nonetheless, um, that's what we're getting with Sabres is, is probably one is, is very few of the pure mid range builds and more of the, well, one third, at least one, one third of them have none of neither of the big studs, but those lineups are always going to have somebody over 10 K maybe a handful of double studs, only a couple of them actually. And then a good amount of with one of those 12 Ks. Um, and that's the way I would look at the slate, you know, and again, it's kind of hard to visualize this because it's not locked yet, but, but, but that is, you know, uh, that is the way I'm going to look at the slate, at least heading into the, that late bit of injury news. Um, that'll do it. Hope this helps. Uh, good luck. We will see you at six for the live stream. And again, if, if you like what you see, I encourage you to uh, like and subscribe to the YouTube videos and also to become a premium su subscriber to True DFS if you play, you know, enough uh, DFS where it'd be worth it. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck.